welcome back to It's Show Business. It's been a while. Uh, I took a little break to kind of retool things and think about where the podcast is going. Uh, We've been so happy with how it's grown so far over the last two years, but just thought, hey, it's time to like think about it and change some things and maybe just take a little break and rethink. So I'm very excited about this next episode is with my great friend, Sam Britton. He's a movie producer, actor, and also we have the best conversations about film and TV and movies and production. So we went deep on James Bond in this episode. We talked about all our favorite James Bonds, but also really dissected the Craig Bonds. So we love No Time to Die. We love Daniel Craig as a James Bond. So we talked about the last five James Bond movies, the rankings, how we felt about them, who's going to be the next Bond. It's a great episode, so I can't uh, wait for you to hear it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the podcast. It's the easiest way to support us. Uh, Subscribe on YouTube. Five-star review on Apple is also really good. And thank you so much, and please enjoy this episode. Um, Did you see the new Bond? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, I loved it. Is it, how does it rank in comparison to the other Craigs for you? Uh, I I think it's hard, it's hard to say when you watch it for the first time, especially because I've watched all the other ones a thousand times. So even the ones that are like maybe a crappier movie are beloved because I've seen them so much. So you start loving them. I put them on in the background sometimes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, So for the new one, since I've only seen it once, it's hard to gauge. I thought it was... It had everything a Bond movie should have. The ending is hard to swallow. I know that it was the right ending. Because he died? Yeah, I know it was the right ending for the movie, but James Bond is supposed to always get away at the end. So it's hard to um, it's hard to get used to the idea that, oh, he's just dead at the end, and now there's going to be a new James Bond. They're saying they planned that from the beginning. I know. I read I that. I don't know if I buy that. I don't know if I buy that either. I think that Daniel Craig definitely wanted to go out like that yeah like he definitely wanted to end like in a literal explosion of flames <laughs> also is this is this the podcast, this are, the we, podcast are we yeah. doing it are doing you it, yeah. recording yeah oh wow you really tricked me into it uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a what bitch. a podcast is it's already going apparently um it's just me rambling on and you staring at me yeah. uh but yeah I, I feel like daniel craig definitely after his run on the franchise wanted to go out in a literal explosion of grandeur and flames yeah so that's what they did so again like being totally uninformed about all this uh i wouldn't be surprised if that was something that he wanted and that he said like i think this is how the character should go and that they were cool with because i know that they wanted to wrap it up for him and uh but then again maybe it was something on the fly i don't know yeah i loved it i, I saw it twice i saw it once there's no good theater anymore since the Arclight's gone. That's the gone. first thing I was going to say is what theater did so you I see? I saw it at, at the, oh, where is it? The AMC. Mm-hmm. Burbank? Uh, Grove. Grove. Not a fan. Grove? No, why would you go there? I didn't know where to go. I was lost. Oh, because that's where I saw the first um, Casino Royale. So uh, I was like, let me bookend it. Yeah, this, the is, first. this is the problem with the Arclight being gone is yeah. that the Arclight is the default. There's a Bond movie coming out, big movie. That's where I'm going to see it. No question. Now with that gone, maybe... I have the solution. Maybe the Vista, but it's just... The uh, Arclight Sherman Oaks is now the Regal, and it, they didn't change a thing. I never liked that one. It, it didn't It didn't feel like an Arclight. It's fine. It's better than all the other it's ones. It's better than an AMC. It's way better than an AMC. Yeah. And the Lamel by your house is awesome. Yes. That you, place, I saw it the second time yeah. there. Is it Lamel or Lamley? I've never known. I have no idea. It looks like it's Lamley. Lamley? But it could be Lamel. I don't know. It's L-A-E-M-M-E-L-E or L-A-M-E-L-E. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's a great theater. Somebody, it's... do we have staff that can look that up? <laughs> yeah, soon. The uh, I just love the vibe there. Yeah. It was just kind of like small rooms, but like good sound. Yeah, the, the sound is good. The screens are really good. Um, they have a good selection of treats. It's not like crazy expensive. That's the other thing about the AMCs that drive me nuts. Even with the, the movie pass, the AMC stubs thing, which I have. So if you go to like the one in Burbank, you know, the parking lot's not great. Like you always have to go all the way to the top. It takes an extra 15 minutes. Yeah. And then when you get in the theater, even though you're getting the movie essentially for free, it's not free cause you're paying the monthly fee, but you know, uh, a popcorn and a soda are like literally $20. It's crazy, and I don't think Lamley is that bad. And at Lamley, you can get a beer. Like oh, they, I didn't know that. Yeah, they have. And the ticket for it was like ten bucks. Or I something. know it's not yeah, bad, and they great. have a, a couple of beers. It it seems like an odd choice to see a Bond movie there because you want 
big. Yeah. But at the same time, that's a great theater. So yeah, I saw the film. I loved it. And then I got me thinking, I even posted this on my Instagram, like here's my order Craig Bonds. Mm-hmm. Like, and at the time I posted, okay, Casino Royale first. Yeah, I feel like I feel I like I saw that. Skyfall second. Uh-huh. Then I put um No, sorry, Casino Royale. Then I put No Time to Die. Mm-hmm. Then Skyfall. Then uh Spectre. Then the obvious last one, which is Quantum of Solace. Yeah. And now that I've thought about it for longer, and this could be totally blasphemy, I'm bumping Casino Royale way down the list. I I, I was just about to say I that. rewatched it yeah. and it was great and it was a whole thing, but like it didn't fit. It's the one that doesn't fit the most out of the other four now, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I would agree with that. I think at the time it felt it felt fresh, it felt kind of gritty. It was a different... I loved uh, Eva Green in it. Yeah, it was a different take. Eva Green is amazing. Yeah. You should put Eva Green in everything. She could be the Bond girl in every Bond movie. And they be, snuck her into every one somehow. I would, I would be fine with that. <laughs> they, like, oh, they always had a still of her I know. in every one. They're like, oh, she's so good and obviously <laughs> gorgeous. Let's just keep putting her in. Yeah. Although, the the not to get too distracted, but Anna Diarmas or whatever her name is, the the Bond girl in the new one with the red dress was also incredible. Not Eva Green, but she was still the awesome. The red dress. The one who says, I've only been training for three weeks. Weeks and oh, then, in the Cuba scene. Yeah, in the Cuba yeah, scene. Yeah, 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 I think it was a red dress. I think it was a blue dress. No, I don't know. I don't, yeah, colorblind. Yeah, colorblind. Uh, uh, but you? anyway, girl, girl in an amazing dress in the Bond movie that was set up to uh, have like three weeks of training and kicked everybody's ass. And yeah, that, that whole sequence was awesome. Um, but uh, what are we talking about? Oh yeah, the even, ranking. Oh yeah. So I would I would agree with you that Casino Royale for a minute felt like. That deserved to be at the top. Yeah. But if you go back and look at the new one, and if you look at Skyfall, like just those two, I think are both better than Casino Royale, especially because they bring in more of the Bond stuff. That if you, I, I get that they wanted to make one that's also for people that were like Mission Impossible is so good, which there right. have been good, like the last Mission Impossible was amazing. Yeah. But before they that, are. they're they are good. They're fine. Yeah. Um. But I think that they wanted to make a movie that appeals to people that are not necessarily Bond fans. Yeah. And I think Casino had that. But what I love about like Skyfall or to even more of a degree, the new one is that they put in all these things for Bond fans. Like they bring in not just the classic Aston Martin, but they bring in like the Timothy Dalton. Yes. Badass Aston Martin. That's one of my favorite cars yeah, of all time. Yeah, the V8 Vantage. Yeah. yeah, and then they snuck in the stuff like when he when he's turning into the tunnel and he points the gun, it looks like the title sequence. Yeah, that was, yeah, was, yeah, that was great. Yeah, it was so great. And the fact that they, they, they mixed in all of these... Uh, little Easter eggs for Bond fans without making it seem too obvious. So if you're a casual viewer, you might not even know. Yeah, even Jamaica, which is a yeah. tie back to Ian Ex- Fleming. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I thought it was really cool that even though it was just a send off ostensibly for Daniel Craig, that they used it as an opportunity to like celebrate the entire Bond history. Yeah. And they did it in a way that was not cheesy, unlike that Holly Berry one, which was total garbage. I have new theories on that too. Really? Yeah. I'm interested to hear because uh, the Holly Berry one was. Uh, was, was it no time? No, it was uh, time. To, something would die in it. Die yeah, another day? Die another day, maybe. Yeah. Um, there was cool stuff in it, but it was the movie itself was pretty bad. I'd put that in probably bottom five Bond movies. And a lot of it was the obvious like, oh, hey, look, I'm wearing the bikini from the first one. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. even a wink. It was just it was just blatant. And it seemed like there was an extra amount of product placement in that one. I don't know. Oh, yeah. The car, the Thunderbird. Yeah, it was yeah. a little gross. But yeah. The first third of that one is actually pretty good. Yes. Yes. And then it somehow just takes a terrible downhill. The, the first the first third of that one he's in jail in yeah, north it's, korea it's he's in, getting it's interesting it's yeah. north korea makes a great bad guy it's got the generals and the army and the hovercrafts and like yeah that the hovercraft shit is all cool it, 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 the rest of the movie even when it fails the hovercraft stuff is cool that's a good note for filmmakers the more hovercrafts the better yeah uh even in did you see from justin to kelly I don't, what is that so from justin to kelly is the movie that when american idol was at its peak they got uh, Kelly. What's her name from the talk show? Um, Ripa. No, uh, American American. <laughs> Kelly Idol. Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson and Justin, the guy that looked like Sideshow Bob, and they put him in a movie. And the big climax of the movie is a hovercraft fight where they have to like throw balloons into the other I love person's it. hovercraft. Everyone loves a hovercraft. Right. It, I think hovercraft instantly makes any movie better. It could not save that 
Bond movie, uh, it was just, I don't know, Holly Berry is bad in a lot of movies, and she was bad in that one. She was good in John Wick. She was good in John Wick. Um, she was bad in that Bond movie. Very bad. Very bad. Uh, still hot. It looked amazing in the bikini, but just she was, the line delivery was just just the acting part was bad. Her yeah. standing there, great. The acting part, awful. Yeah. Uh, I like the guy that played Gustav Graves. I think he's the, also the guy from Black Sails. Uh, Who's Gustav Graves? Uh, he was the guy who is the the diamond guy. The diamond guy with the sun you really, machine. Yeah. I like just put this on as my background movie yesterday. How oh. do you know? Have you watched it recently? No, I've just watched all these movies like a oh hundred times. I do the same <laughs> thing like every year for Thanksgiving. I they have a they I don't know if they still do it but on yeah like, Bond marathon yeah, Bond marathon and I watch the whole thing from on start AMC. to beginning but also I just watch them in the background all the time anyway. Yeah. Uh, so the guy that played Gustav, he was Reyes, great. See, the, yeah, he, yeah, he was a good character. He, he was a great he, character. He's a great actor in general. He's got that like sniveling, punchable, like yeah. you know, rich guy, punchable jerk but not face. too punchable. Right? Yeah, I thought he, you know, was was chewing the scenery in the way that Bond villains should. And that's one thing that always, chewing the scenery. What's yeah, that? that's a it's a showbiz expression, Latif, for people that are in a scene and are just playing it way over the top. You would say, oh, they're chewing the scenery up. Okay. So um, he was definitely doing that in that movie. But what drives me crazy a lot of times when people try and like critique Bond movies is they'll say something about the villain being too over the top or chewing the scenery. Like, no, that's what the Bond villain is supposed to be. They're supposed to be a larger than life you know, bordering on cartoonish character who's aggrieved somehow and wants to make everyone pay in one way or another, yeah, which is another Rami thing. Rami Malek the, in the new one was kind of small. I don't know. I would say he still like is doing a lot of things that you could call chew in the scenery. It's a very like kind of over the top performance, even if it was a more minimal way of minimalist. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's a, you know, the scars on the character and the accent and uh, everything and just the way that like when he would when he would be talking to someone just the way that he was looking at them and his mannerisms and stuff it was yeah but that's what a bond villain is supposed to be they're supposed to be like a freak who's aggrieved that wants to make everybody pay like you know an incel from high school or something and that's how he came across and i think that's what they're supposed to be totally. so i thought to bring it all back gustav graves was a was a great scene chewing villain in whatever die movie that is. Yeah. Yeah. With tomorrow. Never, not tomorrow. Something die, die another day, die another day. Yeah. 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 The, um, well in terms of the ranking, so that was my original rank. So mm. I've kicked casino Royale down for me. The new Daniel Craig ranking is skyfall. Number one, mm. no time to die. Number two, mm -hmm. then I would put, um, specter, then casino Royale. Really? Then, quantum you're definitely higher on specter than i am which is which is weird for me to say because i always loved in the old sean connery movies all the specter stuff you know it's it's kind of cheesy but i i love a good secret society and a you know plot to take over the world and uh blofeld is a great character so yeah. i i was into all that i didn't leave specter loving the film i yeah. thought it was just okay I, my, on a second and third viewing it is very good the the movie itself is good I think the thing that that stuck with me that bugged me so much about it is just the oh he's my brother and daddy didn't love me stuff. Yeah. I didn't I I just felt like that was such an unnecessary thing to add. It could have just been a bad guy. He's just a bad guy. Like there's no reason that him and Bond had to have a, a relationship and especially not that oh it just happened they were like kids together. That bugged me a lot in the films like what bugged me about Spectre is the way they tied it they tried to tie all the other bad guys. Mm -hmm. They tried to make make like a cinematic universe. Yeah, and then show it's all because of Blofeld. Which, which I understand because I'm sure when they were making it, there was some asshole from the studio that was like, "Hey, you know what'd be cool is if we do like an MCU for for Bond things. And yeah, like bring it, bring them all, and tie it all in together." But and they were like, then they tied it all just by putting little photos of actual string <laughs> tying them together. I'm like, this couldn't be more lame. <laughs> No, I'm sure what happened was they made that and they showed it to the studio guy and like, was th is this what you were thinking of? And he was like, yeah. It was probably like out of frustration, like, fine. Or that you want you want to be a tie together here. I'll tie it together. Yeah, as like a kind of like a joke. Being and then he's like, yeah, that's good. That's, e that's either what that I either that or he showed up on set one day and he's like, what's this? And they're like, I don't know. We're trying to figure out how to tie all these guys together to chart. And he's like, I love it. And they were like. Okay. It's, it seemed too easy. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Making him his brother. Yeah. Similarly in the new one when 
uh, what's the blonde girl's name? I, should know I, I don't know. I'm I'm terrible at names. So the don't ever ask the name me of Alea Sedu. She becomes the therapist for Blofeld, yeah, yeah. who she already saw in the last movie, James shoot out of a helicopter right. and then escape from. And then she gets hired to s- treat him. Yeah. What? That was that was a little convenient as well. I don't. Yeah, know, it's way too convenient. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they felt the need to make all these like close relationships with people. There's enough going on as it is to provide conflict. Yeah. Uh between like crazy guy in a cell and the therapist or James Bond who she already had the relationship. You, they don't need to bring in another oh, by the way, you know, it's the space ball shit. Like it was my cousin's uncle's brother's yeah. former roommate. And you're like, so? What? Like I, I I don't know why you feel like that's a necessary thing to include. We don't they we made, don't care about that. Totally. They made the universe of people in that film so small that yeah. when it came time to being like, we're gonna kill millions of people, I'm like, <laughs> there are millions of people in this <laughs> world. Like it was five people. You can't even hire somebody. There, yeah, you guys don't know anybody else. <laughs> this is the like, only people. When they showed the, the death toll going up, it didn't affect me at all. I'm like, okay, what yeah. in, in your world, none of this is real. Any you've So you blew up like 16 buildings by this point. <laughs> yeah. They blew up a lot of shit in that one. I hated it when they threw the, uh, the guy gets thrown into the acid pit near mm-hmm. the end and he starts bubbling yeah. and dying. And then everyone runs out. Like they didn't know they were working it. They get scared. They're like, Oh my God, this stuff kills you. I think it was more like shit's going down. Cause I, I think if you're, and I've always, I've always had this internal debate about the henchmen which i think is to me one of the more fascinating parts of bond movies and of these kind of movies in general um specifically because the henchmen like aside from where did they come from all of that kind of thing um they have to know what they're doing to a certain extent they're true believers like well and i think that's the thing it's like the is, church is that there's probably a section that are true believers and maybe those are like the lieutenants the higher up guys you know the the, the right hand man who's he, the the bad guy's like go blow up that school and he's like yeah okay uh you know like like that guy is a true believer and some of that but i feel like the guys that are working the acid pit, the acid pool, <laughs> acid pool duty. Yeah. Acid pool duty. They might just be, you know, day laborers or something, but they have to, they have to know to a certain degree, like we're working in a pool of acid in a secret mountain location. This is not a good thing that we're doing. So yeah. I would think that any, any chance they've got to jump ship, maybe, uh, did, I don't know. They did make it seem like it was day laborers when, yeah. when Rami Malik walks through the building and everyone kind of, they're wearing like Eastern European garb yeah, and like yeah. they kind of bow to him like they're peasants. And I wonder, and I've always wondered if it's like the Batman thing where you hire one guy to work on like part of your thing for one day and then the other parts. So maybe because people are just hired as like day laborers or temps they don't really get the full scope of what's going on yeah. or is it more strong arm or does he have a really good like 401k and you know good s- benefits starting salary and good benefits because otherwise how do you end up on an island in like an old missile silo working on the acid pool duty yeah you know and and it didn't seem like it was slave labor because they weren't like guys with machine guns there but also those those people clearly had nowhere else to go it'd be like good uh, robot chicken episode to, to deal with all these sub people <laughs> yeah and, like and how they i got think there. if you go back and look at any of the bond movies there's there's definitely the guys that are the true believers who are usually like the main henchmen like um the benicio del toro character from um uh i'm so bad at the names. roger moore one yeah the roger the, uh, the roger moore one where he fights the drug dealer that was a good one. Yeah, that which is which is another great Bond movie. Yeah. But like his character is a true believer and also equally as psycho as the like head villain. So yeah. he's down for whatever. But some of these other underlings, like, you know, the guy driving the boat with him, you know, is boat driving guy really <laughs> did he really <laughs> He's sign- just a teamster? <laughs> yeah. Did did he like really sign up for for cruising down the river at 80 miles an hour getting machine guns shot at him like does he have any idea what's going on or does he go home to his wife like man this job sucks (laughs) (laughs) my favorite movie that dealt with this was iron man 3 yeah when uh like iron man's escaping and he finally gets his armor back and he's killing all the henchmen yeah and one guy just puts up his gun he's like dude i just started working here yeah (laughs) three weeks ago they're so weird (laughs) and he's and he just like lets them go which i think uh is probably accurate for a lot of them. I think um, Austin Powers did a bit about that too. 
I feel like they they did it behind the scenes about one of the henchmen on his day off. I need to rewatch those. Yeah, which which still hold up and I think are pretty good, and especially if you're into like the Bond style um, or the Bond movies themselves. With you know, they they did a pretty good job, at least with the first one, and then kind of decreasing after that. Yeah, with getting the the hero and the girl and the big bad and like the lieutenant and they they I thought they did a pretty good job of sending all of that up. Yeah. Yeah. Um in Casino Royale they did one thing with the Craigs that tied between Casino Royale and the last one that I loved. Actually they did in Skyfall too. There was like a don't touching your ear thing. Mm. Like when they touch the earpiece before they have that like little cat fight or whatever mm-hmm. and they chase the guy who does parkour. Do you remember that? Bond's like telling the the trainee oh, yeah. don't, don't, don't touch, touch your ear because yeah. it shows your earpiece. Yeah. And then in, in the most uh, recent one, when he's driving from his, I didn't notice until second viewing, but he's driving from his little place in Jamaica and he sees the new 007 on the road in the rear view mirror mm-hmm. and she l- takes a glance at him and she's touching his, her ear. Ah. So he made her like way earlier yeah, yeah. than they kind of alluded to. Yeah, that's good. And like little, like writing in little touches like that really makes it uh like a nice through line yeah it yeah. makes the world believable totally the universe and believable believable in a way that you need it to be believable watching you know a guy uh swim out of an exploding tanker at the bottom of the ocean yeah and go okay i'm on board with that like right. there needs to be a certain degree of fantasy to everything uh but they also still have to make enough of the details believable and like grounded in the real world so that you don't watch it and go, oh, this is triple X or, you know, Fast and the Furious where like they're they're knocking a plane out of the sky with a dump truck or whatever the fuck they, you know. Someone said recently, I can't remember, I think it was a comedian or something, but it was like the essence of human thinking is we can think we can jump in front of an explosion and ride the explosion <laughs> like in the uh, mission impossible one yeah when he jumps in front of the explosion and, and he like, rides it to yeah, the, yeah. and it to like train. pushes him into the train <laughs> but like when we're watching we're like all right that was dangerous. that makes sense yeah. yeah yeah i don't know how how all of physics works but i think i know enough to know that probably would not happen like that you probably get burnt to a crisp it, you probably get burnt to a crisp and i'm sure it would throw you or knock you over but it wouldn't carry you gently <laughs> like that <laughs> what's your ranking of the craigs i don't know um i agree with you that casino royale for a little while was closer to the top although for me because it didn't have a lot of the fun bond things like the gadgets and the toys and it has some it's unwatchable on like a 10th viewing right right like the it's too the, it's too the it's, plane thing with the like chasing yeah. the plane and stopping the guy from like it's a little it's a little too straight uh i don't know it it just doesn't have enough it lags of the if bond stuff the in end it. in venice is like no good no so no. boring so boring no closure to it no closure no and i get you wanted to set the up the poker another stuff feels like 2003 it does it, like i'm and, all in and i think i think that's part of why it worked then is yeah. because I know that we both were like everybody else, completely obsessed with poker in 2003. Yeah. I had, I know friends that were talking about investing in a company that made poker chips, and everybody watched World Series of Poker. It was the it was, Bitcoin. It was, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the, it was the Bitcoin of 2003. <laughs> Everyone was. By the way, did you see that the Staples Center is now going to be a <laughs> crypto arena or whatever? Uh, sign of the times right there. Yeah. Uh, and then does that mean it, five minutes after it opens, that they're going to change it to something else? I don't know. Um, there was probably a joke there and I couldn't quite grasp I mean, it. Staples, it makes more, it's probably more economically viable that crypto.com is a company than Staples. I suppose. And also I, I don't, I don't remember. I might've been in LA at that time, but I don't, I don't know if when it first opened, if people went, you're calling it the Staples Center. Oh, there's nothing worse than in Victoria, BC. It's called the Save on Foods Arena. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> like that's like someone who's like that's the name of my business what we're i'm paying the money <laughs> that's so funny uh i just picture like abandoned shopping carts in the hallways and up and down in the stands it just is like it's not exciting no it's not i like uh places like madison square garden yeah or the forum the forum yeah 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 it should be named something no yeah. no more corporate no i i agree like like say it's the forum sponsored by crypto.com or something. I I would be okay with that or Yeah, the Greek it just sounds so like cool. It sounds like a place you're going for an event to happen. Like the forum, you know, 
obviously named after one of the great event centers of history. Like that's yeah. an epic name where like epic shit is going to go down. Although staple, I disassociated staples from the actual store though. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I never think about staples, the store. Nobody ever thinks about staples, the store. I know. But when you say staples <laughs> center, it just, uh, it kind of almost sounds like the forum now. Yeah. What do people go to staples for? Did they go to the print stuff? I bought some paper in a pinch. Yeah. Because only because it's right here. I was going to say, if you don't have a Staples that's down the street from you, you're going to like Target to get paper and paper clips and Staples. I mean, and staplers Amazon. Or, or Amazon or. Do uh, you Amazon yet? This is way off topic. No. Uh, how well, are you? You're like okay, the last. So I, so I do. I do Amazon Fresh because Jeff it's... Bezos. This podcast is on Amazon. Jeff Bezos <laughs> is going to listen to it. And send you a prime Jeff membership. Jeff Bezos is already listening to everything that I do, so I'm fine yeah. with that. I go to the the Amazon Fresh because it's literally downstairs on the bottom floor of my building. And when I purchase things, for some reason, they make me click on my Amazon account on the screen. I assume just so that they have a full log of everything that and I buy. And you get a discount. I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting... I, I got to look at the receipts because if I'm getting a discount, I haven't noticed. But one thing that's interesting about that store is that the prices definitely fluctuate more than other grocery stores. Like one day, the same kind of beer, like if I was getting banquet beer, one day that can be 12, next day can be 14, then it might be eight one day and then go back up the, it, it fluctuates more than I've seen other it's stores. It's because it's millennial targeted. Everything has yeah. to fluctuate. Everything yeah. is a, uh, a coin. Yeah, maybe. Um, but so I do that. But otherwise, I don't buy shit off Amazon. I, I still don't. I know I'm probably the only one on earth. So when you need something, where do you go? I go to a store. Oh, my we've, we've God. Had this, we've talked about this before. There are there are physical stores that you can go to to purchase things, Latif, and not have to wait for someone to bring but it to your where house. Where do you, like, okay, here's, like here's yesterday, a good example. The Comedy Bunker I went, sign. I went to the mall, and okay. I, I bought things at the mall. When I got the Comedy Bunker sign, uh, one of the guys who was helping us set up, took it out of the box mm -hmm. and said, Hey, make sure you hold on to this package because the, the sign fits perfectly in here and it'll be impossible to, to find it. I'm like, mm. cool. Obviously lost. Yes. <laughs> in one week. Probably immediately. Immediately someone threw it, threw it out. <laughs> and now I had to find a sign box. Mm -hmm. Where am I going to go? I don't know. I Amazon. Would, it was I, here the next day. It was $17. I the would, entire sign fit in it, shipped to New York. But you could also just look up like, places in LA that make that kind of stuff and order That's it and a whole go day. get it. I don't know. I don't think it's a whole day. It's a whole day. I, I just don't like, I don't know. I, I just don't like. And Amazon owns MGM, which owns right. the James Bond. Right. Well, we're getting to the point that, that three companies are going to own everything. So Pretty much. So that is, uh, aside from the fact, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like. I, I don't like that I can't go somewhere and physically buy something when I want to buy it. And I'm just worried that all the stores are all going to go away and we're only going to have Amazon if everybody keeps buying stuff off Amazon. Like, I don't want to go on a whole separate rant about what you got to do to get sneakers now. But I feel like that is a glimpse of the the future where, uh, like, I'll, just for two seconds. Go. So the new Air Jordan 1 Bordeaux are coming out on Saturday, which is just an Air Jordan 1 in, like, a cool kind of Bordeaux, like, purplish color with like a silver swoosh. They're cool, right? So I thought I would like to go buy those and wear them, but you can't just go buy them at a store anymore. You have to download an app, get on a waiting list, and then you can buy them online, but you probably won't be able to physically go anywhere to get them. And there's no guarantee because you have to be in like a queue. And then everybody that buys them online, then we'll just flip them to the aftermarket, like secondary sneaker market where they will immediately double in price. So later in the day on Saturday, most people are going to be paying 350 for them instead of like 170 or whatever they're new. Yeah, well, that's controlled supply. Yeah. And I just, I don't like the idea that more and more things are moving to, you have to buy it online. You have to buy it through an app. You can't just go somewhere and get it. So maybe that's my thing with Amazon. You can't, but I maybe, think maybe I sound like a, I'm a 70 year old crank bitching about like. You can go Ugh. a million places to buy sneakers. That's like the one thing that's still. Not the ones I want. Well, that's, I think you're conflating limited edition, a limited drop, right? Of, well, if you want to go buy regular. If you want to go by right, and you can go to any store and leave with sneakers. If you want those specific ones, well, it seems yeah, to be with fancy. Ugly, with like ugly ones I don't want. Well, that's, I mean, if it was a store, you'd probably still have to sign up. Remember when Jordans were hot, you had to sign up? Yeah, I feel like the shoes that I'm, the shoes that I'm wearing are not Jordans, but 
I went to a store Could've and fooled I, me. and I, yeah, and, and I went to a store and I bought them and I get a lot of compliments on them. And I think it, it's just frustrating to not be able to go somewhere and buy something in person uh, because everybody's like, well, why should we have to sell it in person here? We can just have an online store and it goes through a warehouse. We don't have to pay employees. And, yeah. and maybe this is also coming from someone who like worked at malls. So even though I hated a lot of it, I still have, uh, that's probably what it is more than anything else. I still have like a soft spot in, mall in my heart for, for mall nostalgia and mall culture. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, there's something about soda and no phones yeah and uh you know the the orange julius stand i and love wetzel's, orange julius yeah, everybody does and wetzel's pretzels <laughs> and uh you know why is it so good i think it has egg in it probably um, i feel like i got sick the last time i had it but it, they're delicious i don't know like going to the mall was always maybe also because oh no it's milk it's milk and orange juice probably yeah so weird who thought of that i don't know um and why was that ubiquitous in every delicious. every mall for a while weird yeah uh, but let's go back to your ranking. Yeah, so yeah, I did yeah. mine, which was to recap. Right. Skyfall number one. Mm -hmm. No time to die. Mm -hmm. Spectre, Casino Royale, Quantum. And if Quantum didn't have some really bad parts on it, it's Quantum gets a bad rap. It's actually pretty good. And here's what I'll say about, and we'll get to my rankings in a second, but here's what I'll say about quantum is that I feel like quantum was prescient in a little ways that like, yeah, the water with the water, that is definitely going to be a thing that people go to war over. And I think in the same way that when the, again, I'm terrible at names, but when the Jonathan price, James Bond came out, when he was the newspaper editor, that's starting wars for, for newspaper ratings. Oh, and stuff. um, tomorrow never dies. Yeah. So, uh, I think that tomorrow never dies and quantum are similar in that, they predicted things a little bit, you know, not just his like fancy typing pad that yeah, like which on James on James Bonding, which is that James Bond podcast, yeah. uh, from the Nerdist guys, which is very good. Check it out. Uh, they talk about how like, hey, that guy's trying to make all this money with these newspapers, putting two <laughs> countries to war to sell newspapers. Meanwhile, he's tapping on what looks like an iPad. Yeah. In 1997. Yeah. Just invent that. Yeah, exactly. Like you're good then, dude. <laughs> yeah. You could be Steve Jobs. Right. Like he's got plenty of money, and you know could probably start wars uh but i feel like that movie and quantum are similar in a way that we're used to the villain has a plot to blow up the world with nuclear bombs so it felt like the stakes were lower but if you get a little bit more distance from it it was actually a really really clever motive and goal for like the main villain to have and um you know i think it's becoming more and more relevant now as like we see the influence that newspapers and media have in real world events from, you know, wars to politics to whatever. And that the water wars are something that's been coming more and more true as more places run out of water. Yeah. So I think that those two are similar and that when they came out, I think people went like, where are the nuclear bombs? You know, come on. This is the that what, like, what, like, what is the problem? Like, why doesn't quantum work? Cause I was trying to thinking about it. Like it, the opening car ch chase scene. Great. Yeah, great. Title song. Atrocious. I mean, or the new, the credit song with yeah. Alicia Keys and whatever, very, probably one of the worst of all time. One, one of the worst of all Definitely time. Definitely the worst of the Craigs. Yes. So, okay, there's a strike against it. Yeah. Adele, it, Adele would you say best of the Craigs? Sky oh, yeah, Fall? by far, by yeah, far. Yeah. It was a Grammy. It was, it was perfect. Um, then it goes into a scene where M is being betrayed by someone mm -hmm. close to her mm -hmm. with Mr. White. Still great. Still great chase very scene. Very cool. I love the, the actor playing Mr. White. is great. Great chase scene. Yeah. Arrest them. They do this fancy thing where they trace dollar bills to mm -hmm. this guy in Haiti. They go to Haiti. We're still good. Yeah. It's Great a, boat another, chase. Another James Bond hallmark going to an island somewhere. Great. Great boat, boat chase. chase. Yeah. Then he goes rogue. Like, where does this movie? I, I don't. I know it's not one of the best. I right. know that. But it also works. And it works, I think, probably on par with Spectre. It, it's definite. I mean. Uh, uh, yeah. And it's it's I, I agree with you. It's hard it's hard to put a finger on. The DC seven chase yeah. was ph a phenomenal. Yeah. So why don't either of us like it more? Like why? I does think it... it's the, you know what it is. It's the ending. Yeah. There's like, first of all, the movie's too short. It's the shortest right. of all the bonds. All twenty five bonds is the mm. shortest. There's an end scene in the desert where it just feels like they're blowing up a, a lame hotel. It did feel like they were blowing up a lame hotel. And then it kind of fell apart there. I think I think. I think the other thing is that even though we know 
It's funny as I'm, as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at your hole in the wall. So <laughs> on the wall, congratulations! Hole in one, yeah, I got I got a hole in one mini golfing with my parents. I didn't get a framed plaque. That wasn't mini golf, but it was a par three course. Still, this was a very difficult hole, so I feel like I should have got something. You should have got. But something. anyway, what were we talking about? I was talking about quantum. It oh, does yeah. actually work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think it's honestly because even though we know that the water wars are a real thing and that it's becoming more of a thing as climate change makes water more scarce and more valuable. I think it just doesn't feel like enough in the movie or our brains just have a hard time going. I don't know. I'm, I'm, that like, motivates I'm eco-friendly. I, I kind of I know. Like... And I am, I am too. I just think for a bond movie. Okay. Here's what didn't you work. You want like a space laser. Here. Okay. Here's one scene that did not work. When she, he comes back to the hotel with Fields mm-hmm. and she's covered in oil like Goldfinger. Yeah. That was t- like we were talking about two on yeah, the nose. Yeah. That was like, all right. I, I, I think somebody went, oh, you know what we could do? Yes, exactly. Yeah. But it was, it's, it's not, it's not, an, it's not a wink. It was, I agree with you. It's too, too on the nose. And why would the guys who were with water drink her in oil? So, I, I don't remember. I, I got to watch that again. Uh, I feel like there's a way that you could justify it, but I, I do remember seeing that and going, well, that's kind of lame. And the, uh, what's his name? The, uh, who's the Italian guy who's like his contact mm-hmm. in the first one who's still there in the second one? Yeah. Uh, he dies. Uh, Manus. Manus? No, it's something like that. Mantis. Maurice. The, the, the guy with the accent and the brown hair. Something with them. Yeah. Mathis. Mathis. Yes. There you go. Math- I remember the name. Mathis is great in both of them too. Yeah. He goes to the Italian place, apologizes. Yeah. I love, I, I, and that's another great bond thing. The fixer. He, he very frequently has some kind of fixer friend who can like get him stuff or who's the go between, between yeah. him and the Felix was in this one. Yeah. The American CIA I, boss was great. Yeah. I, I, I love Jeffrey Wright as Felix. Uh, yeah, it, it should work better than it does. And I, I agree with you. I don't know exactly why. So if we're going to my list, Oh man, um, Skyfall's probably got to be number one just because I haven't seen the new one for a second time yet. But I feel like the new one is already a close second, and yeah. it, it could be my number one. I just gotta wrap my head around the ending a little bit more because so much of the rest of it I felt like was it was action packed and nonstop, and it had a lot of great emotional moments for him. Yeah, um, I I don't love the Bond's got a kid angle. I, again, like I feel like that's a thing that people like to put in stuff when they don't know what else to do. I thought it was cute. I thought it worked because it tied it together. Because she was a kid. Yeah. A lot of these movies need like what's it? you tell me what this is a filmmaking term. They do everything twice. Like she's the kid in the beginning. He has a kid in the end. Mm. Like what is, is it? Callbacks. Um, I feel like especially with Bond, there's always a, you call it a callback. There's or always a, like a book ending of, or a, a book end when you set up something and then you basically frame it again. Uh, like mirror it at the end yeah. to kind of bring a sense of cohesion to to tie everything together. Right, so together. she's a kid, and then yeah. he's, he's got a kid. Like, yeah. kind of like, yeah. I have a kid, maybe I care more. Yeah, about- maybe you do. Yeah, I don't <laughs> care about the kids that much. I thought the kid dragging the kids through the forest was hard to watch and, like, took way too long. But the, the forest stuff was... It was a little too long, but it was still cool. Like the, cool. the ambushing and the way that he took out the Range Rovers, like watching those Range Rovers yeah. flip around. And that was all real, no CGI. Yeah, that was, that was, and that's another thing that I loved about that movie is that it was a lot of practical effects because yeah. it felt it felt more real and violent and uh, and it didn't look too smooth and clean the way that CGI does. I, practical effects. Oh yeah, yeah. Practical effects always. If you can, if you can afford to do one or the other, always do practical effects. It, That's the pro of death proof, which is probably, I mean, pretty not up for debate. No, Tarantino's that's not worst a, film. It's not a controversial statement. But he, the um, the practical effects on that were great. Yeah, the cars awesome. and the like that was all real. Like when when you're revving an engine with a practical effect, especially if it's a muscle car like an SUV or something, you can feel it. Like you can feel it through the speakers that engine revving. Yeah. With CGI, with you know, if it's faked in one way or another, or it's added later, like it just doesn't feel the same. Yeah. Uh, Quantum it, worst sound. Really? All the, oh yeah. It, it's like you'll notice it. You're now. You're talking about like the mix or the, Not the, the mix, sound effects. The sound design. Oh, sound design. The sound design of even simple stuff like uh, moving uh, like a piece of paper across a table. Mm-hmm. 
it sounds so wrong and so not in pl- maybe because really? i'm a sound guy but i'm like no what the I'll, hell was that i'll uh i'll try and pay attention to that next time i watch so it there's you know, one strike against I, it. I would say that in general sound design is one of the most underappreciated parts of filmmaking because if you watch something good movies that, have good sound yeah if you watch something without that there it just it doesn't feel alive in the same way and like you said someone adding like the sound of the paper going across or your feet on the kitchen floor or like the specifics of that help you feel like you're there with the characters and sound designers you know they're the ones that do all of that for the most part yeah i mean yeah. that's like when you're doing your first film or tv thing mm-hmm. bad sound will ruin it oh for sure for sure yeah like more more student films and indie films are ruined by bad sound than anything else. Cause you know, if you look at something like clerks, clerks didn't look great. It, you know, looked shitty. Uh, it was kind of supposed to look shitty, but it looked shitty and that didn't take you out of it. The acting wasn't great. That didn't take you out of it. But if the sound was bad, you would have checked out right away and gone like this, this is a piece of shit movie, but his sound was good and the dialogue was funny. So people are willing to forgive like, the bad acting or mediocre acting and it looking like shit. But if the sound is bad, you're screwed. If yeah. it sounds like it's in a bathroom or you can't hear what people are saying or the... it's like when you have latency, you ever watch like a, your Bluetooth is not saying to your oh, headphones yeah. or something. And yeah. there's like latency with the talking. It drives it's, like, you, it's like, you're done. I don't care how good the movie is. No, I'm not watching I was, it. I was talking to somebody on the phone the other day and I could hear some kind of an echo on the thing and it went for three seconds and I was like, I got to call you back. I can't yeah. do this. <laughs> like I'm, I just can't. It, it, yeah. it just grinds on you. Um, but that's interesting. I'll, I'll definitely look out for that next time that I watch it. But getting back to my list, yeah. the long awaited list. That's the new name of this podcast. Getting back to my list. Yeah. Get, getting, <laughs> getting back to whatever it was we were supposed to be talking about. So if we find a name for this, it should be a shorter version of like getting back to what we were talking about or something. Finally, like that. Sam tells us his list. <laughs> uh, okay. So I think Skyfall is probably number one only okay. because I haven't watched the new one is called no time to die right yeah I, because i haven't watched no time to die more than once all right we're in sync for the first one right so i think that no time to die has a possibility of taking the number one spot but i gotta watch it again so for right now sky falls the the best for all the okay. reasons that skyfall is the best and we don't need to like go into all that anymore um and then from there on out it gets trickier i i think at one point i would have put I would have put Casino next, but I can't anymore. So, I don't know. Maybe Spectre. So, sp- so I think Spectre would be number three. You do we're in sync. And then, oh, the last two were tough. Because, now, honestly, now that we've been talking about Quantum, I feel like I that's probably a better movie than I remember. So, I might actually put, this is a very controversial thing to say, but Casino last? fifth. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just off on the second one. Yeah. Second to last. It's tough because there's a feeling of like, you know, when you leave the movie mm-hmm. and you're like, I, there's kind of like a general thing. It's like, I liked mm-hmm. the movie. So if I go through, I le- left Skyfall liking it. Yeah. I left No Time to Die liking it. I yeah. left Spectre not liking it. Yeah. I left Casino liking it. I left Quantum not liking it. I would agree with every one of those. I would say that... Um, I liked Spectre more when I watched it at home for the second time. And I I don't remember exactly what it was that bugged me. But when you leave the theater and you're like, that was fucking awesome. Like, that's definitely a different feeling than going, I don't know. Yeah. And I definitely had an I don't know on Spectre and on Quantum. But the more that we talk about it, I don't like that Casino Royale was not as bondy as the rest. Yeah, not as Bondy. He kind of had some gadgets, like they gave him the smart blood. Yeah, I, I he also it, he also just seemed very beatable, and I know that he ended up winning in it. But yeah. I don't know, he doesn't seem. Well, as, it, it felt real. It felt like the most yeah, realistic. And I don't necessarily want realistic James Bond. Like you know, I want space lasers and. My favorite scene out of, I mean, I'm biased because I love cars, but mm-hmm. like my favorite scene of all five was the new Aston Martin scene. Oh. Like so good. It's just so perfect. So it was it was perfectly um it was perfectly conceived. And the sp- fact that they brought practical. In, yeah, and, and practical. The fact that they brought in that car. Uh it was gorgeous. The whole the whole thing was just awesome. Do you think okay, so there's the Aston Martin that he gets in Casino Royale that mm-hmm. he wins. Yeah. Is that the same Aston Martin that's in Spectre? Or in in Skyfall? 
Does he win the Aston Martin and Casino Royale, ship it back to, to London? He pulls it out of storage for Skyfall. Interesting. But in, in between that time, he's had Q's gone through it and like put the guns well, in. Well, that's an interesting question because technically, especially if you go back to the older Bond movies, he never owns the Aston Martins. They're always Q branch. So you would think that the actual Aston Martins with all the stuff have all been in Q branch storage or since blown up or destroyed because most of them are all blown up and destroyed except for the one that he gets rebuilt, which is in... Right, but they're rebuilding Skyfall. the one from Skyfall. So they're right. rebuilding his. Right. This, that, is it the same Aston Martin all three times? That's a good question. I, I think you could make the case that it is, that he had it rescued and had it put back together as his own personal car. Because, you know, he goes off he goes off and goes rogue sometimes, and he would still need, like, his super spy machine to be able to go rogue and be James Bond. He wouldn't just want, like, an off the off the lot Aston Martin from, you know, Heritage Classics or somebody. Yeah, you can't just have, when you're used to like the fully, all the options, right, right, you can't right. go no power windows. Right, because I'm sure it's also, it's not just got the guns and stuff. It's like, you know, in Blues Brothers, it's got a cop sh- cop shocks, cop motor, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. the cop battery, like right. it's got all the upgrades. All the cop stuff. Yeah, all the co- even if it doesn't look like it from the outside, all the guts have been replaced with like, you know, titanium uh amazing carbon fiber lightweight durable so it, it it makes sense it is the car so he won it shipped it back to q branch q right. branch beefed it up or but or, they made it exactly like this is where it, it gets right. confusing because they made it exactly like the goldfinger right but i kind of wish this is okay this is a new pet peeve with this yeah. whole thing i kind of wish they didn't try to include other bond hit like other bond history into this timeline like mm. it screws it all up like why does he have the gold finger bo- like bond like car and- I, I think if 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 you go down that road and that's why casino royale was cool they're like right. we're breaking from all this stuff except yeah. for some reason judy dench is still here right other than that <laughs> other than that so same same m but everything else different. all different right i don't know that's that's one that it, that's an existential crisis waiting to happen if you go down that road because you're like wait a minute so this is a new blofeld with a different history but he's got the same car from when we saw the other Blofeld, who was also the head of Spectre, but that we didn't know anything about and was probably. But it's not like the that's the thing. Guy. They break from history, but then yeah. they don't. Yeah. I don't know. It's I, I think even if you're sort of rewriting the James Bond canon for every different James Bond, I think we all kind of expect that. But they want to give people some sort of consistency. And what's the best way to do that? The suits, the cars, the watches you know, all the James Bond specific stuff. And then I think that their attitude is, well, the rest of it, whatever, we can just make it up as we go along. Because the Brosnan era, they had the nod to the Aston in his first one. Mm-hmm. He just drives it. Yeah. And then all the new stuff was like, it existed in its, his I, new I, world. I will say that it that it did really bug me that he was driving BMWs in those movies. Oh, it was the, it was it, it atrocious. Was, it was it was just offensive on many levels, and you know to have that like underpowered, no balls Z Roadster that like you and know the sedan. Yeah, which is such a it's it's like driving a like driving a Miata basically with a BMW. It's, badge. it's just such corporate thinking. It's like who's watching these movies? Like dads with kids. What do they yeah. buy? Seven fifties. Yeah. What are we gonna put in the movie? A seven fifty. <laughs> let's let's give James Bond a giant sedan. Yeah, yeah. But it did have cool gadgets. I'll give you it that. Had, the 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 remote driving thing on the pad was cool. Yeah. The putting him in a bmw sedan not cool <laughs> like a 75 year old obstetrician is that was ahead cool. of its time him driving the car from I his know. cell phone in the back seat yeah i wonder i wonder if whoever like predicts the technology for those movies also has another business where they like think of things for people like for companies that people are going to need because that's something that you can do now is you know self-drive your car with your phone what's it called in movie terms when like a, a plot device is retroactively engineered. Like it, the BMW, there was a, they stretch a metal cable across to stop the BMW mm-hmm. and the BMW has a saw that yeah. pops out of the sign to cut the thing. Yeah. You're like, that's too perfect. So like, I think, I think you just call like that the, retroactively engineering. That's, like, the, that's the, Oh shit moment from filming where the, where you go, Oh shit, wait, how is he going to get through that? Oh, let's add this. So okay. that's so that's a like oh it'd be so cool if we have this but how's he gonna get through it I don't know what if he had this on the end great do that but he just has like the that I don't like that 
That's too single purpose. Well, I it it comes from when when as the as the writer as the director you get yourself into a corner and you realize they, this happens on TV series all the time when they when they don't have a like finite end point that they're writing to like the series is always better when they know how it's going to end and they're writing to that as opposed to they just make it up as they go along because then all of a sudden you narratively get in this corner where you're like shit there's we're in a room with no doors how how do we get out of here and right like, we've killed all the characters yeah, yeah. Like, like what are we supposed to do now and they go oh what if suddenly there was like a magic button they could push and a door appears and then they get out of the room and you're like wait it was all what? a dream or it was all a dream <laughs> or like it was his you know um uh whatever the the thing was on on mr robot the like fight club like it was his He's psychotic, and it's his imagination, and he's oh, he's, yeah, bold, he's, yeah. he's he's imagining his dad. Or, I, I felt like Miss in Mister Robot, there was a lot of those. They painted themselves yeah, into a yeah, corner. Yeah, and they're like, "What do we do?" Uh, and the entire series. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think a lot of it is that, and you know, James Bond movies have been as guilty as that as anyone is, where they realize, "Ah, oh, shit, there's no way for him to get out of this. How does he get out of it?" And then your choices are either come up with some magic button or just jump scenes into another scene, and hopefully people don't think about it. Because sometimes you do have to do that when you realize there's a situation where it would just take too long and it would be too complicated to explain how the scene was resolved. So the best thing to do is just fucking move on and hope yeah. people don't even notice. Yeah. And I don't know. In in some ways, that's that's uh, that's better than the magic button because sometimes with the magic button, you could feel cheated. But other times, if they do a good job, you go, eh, I, I guess that's fine. And then you move on. The cutting the cord is convenient, but... It's no more convenient than having smoke bombs and oil slick and, you know, I guess surface so. to air missiles. And <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one thing. If you go back and watch the James Bond movies is that he always happens to have a gadget in the car that's specific to like whatever situation he's that's, in in that movie. But not always not in. I felt the no time to die. Ones were general enough. Machine guns. Yeah. Smoke screen. Yeah. Uh, Landmine. Also, I thought that Those was pretty general. That was the scene where he's in the car and he spins it around with the machine guns and takes everybody out when he's like whipping. Yeah. When it, we when we were growing up, we call that whipping shitties when you like. Oh yeah. Uh, um, we used to do it on the ice rinks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought that scene was awesome. Yeah. That was that was so fun. I feel like in the theater, I went yeah. There's a great uh, BTS thing you can watch online where they talk to the stunt guys mm -hmm. and so the machine guns it's all real and i didn't see this in the movie but like apparently from the air vents shells are flying out really so it's actually firing it's actually firing blanks shells are firing out of, they made it actually plausible so they 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 put like machine guns in the car yes. that were that were uh, that shooting. Are fi wow. firing blanks wow. and like actually the the lights come down and then they have it's not a squib but like what's it called with like a little remote they pretend to shoot here and it explodes over there. Yeah, you can call it a Whatever. Squib. Yeah. So they have like bullet squibs and they had to time the car and each squib to blow up because it's all real. It's not done That's after the so effect. That's cool. so cool. So they're all blowing up and spinning and it's all happening in real. Yeah, it's amazing how much time and effort it went into just doing that. that was probably this is like three. This is probably a team of 30 for yeah. three years. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably a team of 30 for three years planning it and then yeah. a week to set it up for like a 30 second sequence on screen, but that sequence was badass. Yeah. So that was, that was awesome. Well, well done guys. That was, I think worth the effort. Absolutely. All right. So since we're talking about bond stuff in our top 10, what would your go-to favorite bond movie be? If you just had to like off the top of your head, pick one. I know that's hard. Uh, don't overthink it. Just first one. I mean, I had to put Skyfall probably. Really? Maybe this new one, but in, in the current, out of, out of all of them, and if, the, if that's the case, that's I think that that's a solid I, choice. I kind of need to pick. Can I pick one per per Bond? Is that? It's cheating, but fine. Goldfinger for Connery. Of course. Maybe Doctor No, but Goldfinger. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Timothy Dalton, his first one, whatever that one was. Yeah. The second one is pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, Wait, Craig, the, the first, the first Dalton one was that the cellist or the other one. The cellist. The cellist. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good Aston Martin in that one. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Aston, yeah good yeah. Aston Martin. Yeah. Um, great little skis. With mm -hmm. the thing. Uh, you can go see that at Peterson, by the way. Really? They're all there. All the uh, bond cars are I there. I definitely need it's to go pretty over cool. there and check that out. That's I take the kids cool. there. And then for Lazenby, I mean, that's easy. One mm -hmm. of one. More. Oh, man. They're all. More is not my favorite bond. Oh, I love Roger Moore. Really? Yeah. I don't dislike it, but to me, it's just not. 
James Bond. It, it's, it's something else. It's different. He's the like the the gentleman effete James Bond. Uh, like he's the you know Sean Connery's the working class James Bond and Daniel Craig same thing. I feel like we talked about that before. Roger Moore is more like the private school country club James Bond, which is just a different take on it. Yeah, yeah. And his movie his movies got more ridiculous and over the top but i think most of them were all in the 80s which makes sense because yeah a lot of everything was over the top uh but they're fun a view to a kill i like that one yeah um i didn't the harlem one is okay that's that living like living like die living that's another die. one of the all-time great theme songs too oh great theme yeah. song it's yeah. hard i i don't have a rod i'm not even gonna put roger in because he's near the bottom yeah but uh and they're fun. I'll, during Bond Week, I'll put them on, but mm-hmm. I'll I, I'll never throw one on on my own accord. Ever. Oh, I I watch those Roger Moore ones all the time. What do you put on, of the Roger I, Moore? I, all of them. Like like uh, right now, you're you want to throw one on. What do you throw on? Since we were talking about space lasers, probably Moonraker. Moonraker's good. Yeah. Moonraker. It's so, it's so silly, but it's it's fun. And it is you fun. know, Jaws, Jaws is a great villain and astronauts in space shooting lasers at each other again that's probably something we're going to be dealing it's with it's the most austin um austin powers of... it is it is and i think that's probably the one that they base the most of austin powers on because it is the most uh over the top probably of even the most over the top james bond movies yeah i, I, I like that one's that one's really fun living that and brazen way. it's pretty much golden eye yeah and then man with the, man won the golden gun is another good roger moore movie yeah, I like that one. Yeah. They're all like, they're all watchable, but yeah. none of them like touched me. Like they're like, this is good. <laughs> you always want to be touched. Right. By, by a, a good movie. Exactly. Yeah. Like if we're talking about like, I never le- watched a Roger Moore and been like, okay, that was good. Really? Did you, I, I love all those. Like Scaramanga is a great film. They, and for me. But you, you see how you're doing? You're like, I love the Roger Moore ones. And you point out a specific detail right. about it. Are there specific details that I like? But I don't know. I I really like the Roger Moore ones. I think that they're fun. He I think he made a couple of great ones and a couple ones that are silly, but they're still enjoyable and have all the Bond things in them. Like in uh, what's like underwater I think car? I, uh, that was cool. That was Lotus? cool. Like the like in like in Octa. I think it's an Octopussy at the beginning when he's impersonating like the Argentinian general to go down there and like take out the missile warehouse, and <laughs> he's got a trailer with like a fake horse's ass built on it that is <laughs> that his collapsible <laughs> plane backs out of on the freeway. Uh, that's just awesome. I mean, it's over the top, but I feel like they they knew that they were making an over the top movie and just went for it. And I feel like as long as you're self-aware about what you're doing, you can get away with it. It's when people are trying to make like a serious movie and it's over and the, the top. horse's ass. Open yeah. Up. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, come on, dude. That's, yeah, what are you that, doing? That's why the era is are... actually Connery's had the most variable era. Mm-hmm. It was like some of them were great. Some were serious and some were campy. Yeah. So, some were like, like very serious. And then some, I think that some of the later stuff got a little campier like i think thunderball was a little campier yeah uh but goldfinger is just played straight yeah which is goldfinger is probably my all-time favorite james bond movie if i had to pick one and i could do what you did which is cheat, cheat. and like pick one from each different bond but i think that well i gave you my overall answer was skyfall yeah and i think that that's a, a great choice i think that goldfinger has everything that i want out of a bond movie it's yeah it's got the, but Skyfall doesn't have everything. This new one might be it because Skyfall doesn't have everything out of a Bond movie. Right. But it was just such a good but it's, story. It's such a good. It's just such a good story, and it's a it's a great movie. If you didn't ever see any other James Bond movies and you just watched Skyfall, you'd be like, "Dude, that was awesome." Yeah. And it's got a great great song. villain. The cinematography is incredible. Uh, you know, great the, score. Yeah. The the setting for the cabin is gorgeous, and then. That sequence up, it's got to be uh, like top 10 most incredibly shot movie sequences in the last, I don't know, 30 years or whatever. When he's up in the building with oh, all yeah. the glass and the neon. like I mean, he's one of the best cinematographers yeah. ever. I forgot yeah. his name, but like... Uh, Roger Deakins, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A couple of small things and we're going to wrap. All right. The um, Deakins, I felt like also in uh, Spectre, 
it was basically the whole opening scene was that one shot. Yeah. It was like a dress. They used James Bond to dress <laughs> rehearse seven, uh, 1917. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like, all right, well, Bond's, Bond's got a huge budget. Oh, they're well, calling us. We'll just do that. Yeah. Test run. Yeah. <laughs> Get paid to rehearse. And then I think my prediction for the next era is that they're going to keep Ralph Fiennes as M. Mm-hmm. They'll keep Money Penny. They'll keep Q and mm-hmm. introduce a new James Bond. Yeah. What's what's interesting, I think, is that since they like to go up against type of the last James Bond, that we're probably going to get more of like a sophisticated, gentlemanly James Bond as as opposed to like a rough and tumble Daniel Craig. Like the, the word on the street is, and you know that I am, I got my ear to the street at all times. Is that people are talking about Richard Madden? Richard Madden. They're talking about um, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. No, yeah. I don't. Oh, I don't, don't no. know. Please no. no. Um, Tom Holland. Not no. my, not my first choice. Who? No. Tom Hardy. I think Tom Hardy would be a great Bond. I don't know. He he would be a definitely a Sean Connery, Daniel Craig type. If he he's he's the thing with him is he's really good at the roles where he doesn't have to say a whole lot and can just kind of like grunt his way through scenes he was great in he like, was he was he was inception he was really good in inception yeah uh and he wears you know wears a suit well uh i could see a version of it i could also grunting you know, through the scene is james i know Bond. i could also see a version of richard madden but he hasn't i haven't seen him do any tough guy stuff and like you have to be able to do the tough guy stuff which hardy would do well yeah. it could also be an unknown i don't know it I, I i i will make a prediction though that they will go against daniel Gregg's type and do someone who's a little bit more gentlemanly and not do another kind of like boxer you know sean connery type because because usually you go people just saw that let's try something different so i wouldn't be surprised you think the rock yeah, The Rock. <laughs> he, he, you saw in the news. He's yeah, like, he wants to do he, it. He's in everything. I mean, he could, he could, he could literally go to Netflix tomorrow and be like, "I want my own James Bond franchise." Yeah. Uh, so they'll go. All right, it's a, it's a new. It's called character. Jim Bond. It's called yeah, uh, uh, Jim Barnes. Yeah. Secret agent, and we're gonna do eight of those for you, and he would be able to get that done, which has got to be an amazing thing. I was gonna say earlier, until I forgot, you know about Christopher Lee, right? Speaking of Scaramanga, he was like a real life secret agent badass in the SAS. The guy from Back to the Future? No, um, the guy who played Scaramanga, the villain in Man with a Golden Gun. Okay, yeah, Roger yeah. Moore is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 Christopher Lee, is. he also played... Scaramanga's that opening with the mirrors and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's so bad. Man with a Golden Gun. No, it's awesome. That, that whole movie is How does awesome. He get, it's like a guy it's got, got lost in his old so man got lost in his bathroom. That's also one example of a non Aston Martin car that's awesome. Those AMCs in that movie were badass. I would I would love to drive one of those all wheel drive AMCs. Mm. Uh, but Christopher Lee, this is not like a great way to end all of this because <laughs> I <laughs> I just wanted to get in an early get it and in, get a get chance. It in. So Christopher Lee was a guy in the SAS who like f- did for real badass secret agent shit during the war. And uh, a lot of it he, you know, can't talk about, but he said, yeah, it's essentially James Bond shit. And I feel like he, I feel like he also might have known Ian Ian Fleming. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great way to wrap. Sam, this is awesome. Yeah. But uh, I've had a great time and we're going to discuss more movies. Oh, I forgot I was on camera this whole time. I'll see you next time. I was picking my nose or something. Yeah, you were. Okay, great. All right, later. Bye.